Players on the most high, oh my shit is so far. Get it popping like it's low fi no lie. Hit you with the wave like We doing it tonight, baby. We doing it tonight. Hey! Oh, tonight's show gonna be wild. Tonight's show gonna be wild. Here we go. Smelling like gas, like I live with Hold on. Smoking at the floor. Come on, I got a show for y'all tonight, baby. Catch it with Mac, episode 12. We in this. I got the legendary DJ M3 tonight, man. I had to bring the air horns for him. Pleasure, I see you, baby. AC, what's going on? I appreciate y'all jumping in. Oh, it's a vibe tonight, man. Oh, it's a vibe tonight, man. Hold up. Episode 12. Hey. Three months. Three months. I'm blessed to be here. Three months. I told y'all we're going to turn this into something. Deborah, what's going on? Appreciate you joining in. AC, I see you, brother, man. I, I know you're ready to say what's up to M. Dizzle. M. DZ. Uh, uh, uh. There he is. There he is. <laughs> Survive tonight. Y'all know what the Bob is tonight, man. Hey. Episode 12, catching up with Matt. Appreciate everyone that has joined, watched so far, man. Tuning in. Catching a vibe every Friday night. It, that's just fun for me. How does he do it? We're going to find out tonight, man. Like I said, I got a show for y'all tonight, man. Had to show my brother Carlton Zeus some love. DM'd him, said, yo, I'm gonna drop some of your stuff, man. Show tonight gonna be crazy, man. <laughs> M3, I got those air horns just for you, brother. I'm on my DJ shit tonight. Y'all already know the vibes, man. Every episode, every episode of Catch Up with Mac, fueled by the one and only Jameson. Uh, this bottle's getting low, so if y'all are listening, Jameson, uh, I need y'all to send me something, man, because I don't know why you let me go to the store tomorrow to pick up another bottle. We gonna try it. I didn't think M3's old ass knew how to use IG Live. We, we had a combo earlier. I, I walked him through the whole process, man. <laughs> I appreciate everyone jumping in, man. Fabian, what's going on, brother? Hey, hey Jay Mathos, what's going on, man? I'm glad you could tune in tonight, man. Catch up back. Episode 12, man. Episode 12 tonight. Got the one and only legendary San Antonio's very own. DJ M3, man. Master Mixing Mondo, man. We doing it. Fueled by Jameson tonight, baby. We doing this. Mondo, I'm bringing you on in a moment, man. I got you, brother. I got you. Y'all sit back. Y'all grab yourself a drink. You know we drinking tonight, man. Okay. We're getting the vibes going tonight. I love SH. Yo, what's going on, man? Haven't seen y'all in forever. Appreciate you jumping in tonight. Okay. M3, you ready? M3, we getting this going? You remember our days hosting together, man? The, the, the build up to where we're about to start, man. It's my kind of vibe, brother. Catch you up, Matt. Episode 12. The one and only DJ M3. I'm bringing him right in right now, man. <laughs> Alright, let's see, man. Let me get you. Throw the music out. Let me let's get it going. Let's keep it going. I appreciate everyone jumping in tonight. M3, I sent you the request, brother. 
Freestyle beats with a freestyle flow. Hey! Yo! Oh, <laughs> You kill me you kill me with that man. <laughs> there he is. There he is. There he is. My brother, what's going on? What up, Mac? How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Nice, man. Nice. Hey man, look, I, I know this is something new for you. You don't usually do things like this. AC I don't. AC in the comments already said that he didn't think you're old ass. Knew how to use iPhone. I am old. <laughs> I'm to touch tonight on how old you were. Pause. Not like that. But you know what I mean? <laughs> Fucking AC. <laughs> hey, man. Catching up with Mac. Episode 12. It would not be right if I don't show my brother the proper love right here, man. Hold on. Let me make sure everything is stopped real quick. Um, because uh, this is a big deal, man. I'm so glad to have you on the show. Uh, you know, uh, thanks man. for having me on, man. You might do, man. You might do. So catch up with Mac. Episode 12, introducing the one and only, the legendary, Master Mixing Mondo, DJ M3, <laughs> baby. What's the <laughs> God. I had to get the air horns tonight, man. I had to. I know, man. I know. I had to download Virtual <laughs> DJ on my new Mac real quick. And I was like, yo, where are the horns at? Because I need to get the horns. <laughs> I hear you, dog. I hear you. Hey, man. Episode 12. That's a nice little milestone for me. Three months into it. Uh, I'm glad to be doing this every Friday night, and it's the. I like it, brother. Hey, Hell yeah! I appreciate, it, man. I've seen you. I've seen you tune in. We've been working out when you were gonna be on, and uh, finally had the chance to get you on, man. I'm blessed, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. All okay. good, brother. <laughs> what's going on with you, man? What, what, what's what's going on in Mondo M3's world? I saw that you were on Vibe 107.5 this morning with Xavier, man. You had you on. Oh, it, yes. How was that? Yeah, man. I had to get up early. I don't like that, <laughs> but it was fun, man. X is a cool guy, you know, got to mix on his, on his show this morning. Uh, it was pretty cool. And I got to play some old stuff. He just said to play some old, old KTFM stuff, uh, from back in the nineties, you know, early 2000 type stuff. Uh, I said, all right, I can, I can do that. So yeah, it was fun though. No, I saw, I saw that man. And, and, uh, I missed it. Uh, I told you earlier when we spoke on the phone, I was up to like <laughs> Too early. four in the morning so um, I missed it, but let me tell you, when I got on Facebook, I saw overwhelming amount of love for you, man. I don't know if you saw that, if you felt that. Yeah, I feel weird about that, but I, I appreciate all the love, man. I really do. Dude, it's, it's, it's a big deal, man. It's a big deal. You don't, I, you're humble, man. You're a real humble dude. You always have been. Time we've <laughs> talked, I've tried to tell you how important you are to the city, and I don't think you realize it, man. But you're a big, uh, big, uh, you know, you set yourself in stone in San Antonio music scene, man. You got to realize that because you've done a lot for the city, man. And a lot of people realize that. Yeah, yeah, I, I appreciate it, man. <laughs> I feel weird about that, though. Get, give, give us a little look around. Is that your studio right here? What, what's it looking like? Yeah. It's pretty dope. Well, I don't, I don't want to move that. It's on a stand. So, but I have my DJ equipment behind me, computers here, uh, mix boards here, keyboards. So, yeah. Nice. <laughs> and hey, shout out to everyone that's in the building right now. I, I said what's up to everybody. Sergio just joined. You remember Sergio from the station? Man? Yes, I do. What up, Serge? Um, uh, uh, AC had said. I see. Uh, I, I I see Fabian. Yeah, Fabian's in the building. <laughs> what up, Fab? Uh huh. My boy, man. Hey, look at this right here, Sergio. He's a young cat, man. This guy's in his early twenties. DJ M3, the goat. See, I'm telling you, man. You don't realize. Ah, uh, man. I don't know. <laughs> I try. I, I try, man. That's all I can do, man. You know, I'm learning every day, though, still. No, I see it, man. I see it. Hey, uh, uh, talk to me about quarantine life, man. Quarantine life was a big part of everything, everybody's life from pretty much March until the end of July. I know a lot of people resume life, but uh, what was early on quarantine life for you like? Well, first of all, it was a, it was a shock. I mean, grinding every weekend, all week, uh, yeah. everything just to stop like that. Uh, I'm feeling to spin it at a club right now. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. man, I can't, I can't wait. I but um, at first it was kind of weird. Uh, you know, then I felt down for a little bit. Like, oh man, there's nothing going on. You see, uh, you know, watching the news, it was depressing, you know, just like, wow, all this shit's going on. Uh, but then, you know, and then I got, I got COVID yeah, in June. 
Yeah, let's, in June. Let's, let's talk about that because um, you're one of the few people that, that I actually personally know uh, that contracted uh, COVID-19. And I, I, I know <laughs> when me and you talked, uh, I didn't even know about this. And me and you spoke maybe about your third week into it. And you were like, yeah. No, I wanted to get you on the show and you were like, man, I, I, <laughs> I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> I, and I was like, I thought you were dodging me. And now I'm like, oh my God, you know? No, no, I wasn't. And bro, it was, it was horrible, man. I mean, it lasted for me, uh, for about three weeks. And, um, like the first day I was straight up cold, like sick as a dog, sweating yeah. the whole nine, massive headache. Uh, and then the next day I felt better Then the next day I couldn't smell. Then the next day I went to go get tested. Uh, I couldn't taste anything by that time. And that shit lasted for about two weeks. Wow. And it was always something. Every day was also always something. Stomach, you know, head again. So, uh, so throughout this whole time, it was just fucking horrible. I've seen so many people talk about the not smelling, not tasting. Is that yeah, dude, that's, still like that's real. You didn't taste chocolate. You ate a chocolate bar, could not taste chocolate. Nothing, dude. Wow. It, it felt like, um, for me, it felt like a... Uh, I had a scar in the back of my neck all the way up to my nose. So I couldn't smell anything or taste anything. It felt weird. Yeah. Yeah, it was fucking horrible, dude. But man. Um, but I got over it, man. I just rested. Uh, and you're really tired all the time. That's weird. Yeah. Uh, I drained. But I drained. And, you know, I didn't do anything, man. That whole month, June was just washed. Like fucked, I said, you know, gone. And I hadn't really like heard from you. And I mean, it completely made sense when you tell me. And I was like, shit, man, if there was anything you had, yeah. did, you know, me and me and Lori could have been there. Uh, Lori said hi earlier before the show. She said, that's how you low <laughs> on the phone earlier. Like I said, I had to give you the little run through through Instagram. Yeah. Live Cause like I said, man, I'm, man, your humbleness is, um, it, it speaks volumes, man. I got to be serious with you because I know that you're not much of a guy that likes doing things like this. The one thing at the mm. station that I remember so much was you would always tell me, uh, you were like, I don't really want to be on the mic. I don't really want to. Like, <laughs> no, it's not me, man. You, you, I mean, if I have to get on, I'll get on, yeah, but, but you're, I'd rather not get on. He's like, I don't want to be a part of this. Like, just, no, 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 I'm good. Um, so I, <laughs> but I, I love that. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad and blessed that you got through COVID, that you're okay. Um, you know, like I said, right now is a scary time, man. We, we have a, um, yeah, it is. we have a certain leader. Uh, I don't know if I can call him a leader. Uh, I don't think you call him that either. I think he's a clown dog. Come on. He's a clown. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I just think really, really, you know, spreading some man, some, some bad images out there from his RNC, uh, you know, conventions and just, uh, yeah, I know AC right here feels the same too. Um, <laughs> well, we got to make sure that, you know, we keep people aware of that. Hell yeah. It's, Hell yeah, AC. <laughs> we see him. But uh, we got to make sure COVID is a serious issue, man. And like you said, man, you felt sick. You felt like a scar in the back of your throat. You couldn't. Yeah, all, all right. the way up to my nose, man. It, 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 yeah. Fucking weird. So for everyone right here that's watching that has thought that it's bullshit or not real, my man M3 right here lived it. So how the fuck are you going to tell people that it's not real when people like this man right here <laughs> lived it and survived it, man? So like I said, I'm glad that you're yeah. doing good, brother. I'm glad that you're doing good, for real. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate that. We got some questions right here. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fabian uh, said that he's the one uh, that gave you COVID. Um, so he did not. <laughs> hey, I think you can help with whatever... Uh, medical costs that you <laughs> that you occurred over that <laughs> split half of it. Um, Fabian's retarded. I, I like Fabian, man. He's my boy. For dropping uh, Crayon's album. I remember you working on Crayon stuff all the time at the station, oh, man. But well, what I have been doing is working on uh, some tracks, songs. You know, actually, uh, since I can't get any, anyone over here to, to cut vocals, uh, I went through my hard drives, you know, and found old songs that, we're just sitting there that I, I hadn't finished. And uh, so I used those vocals and reproduced everything, kind of like remixing them. And uh, so I'm working on an EP now. I got about three solid songs mixed, done, uh, and about another four or five just sitting there that I haven't really touched yet. Nice. Um, so you, you feel like this time during quarantine and everything might as well might as well kind of being away from the station it's given you a chance to really like explore other things that you have wanted to but you're so busy yeah and i gotta say man uh since i've had all this time uh i've done a lot of stuff around the house 
uh, took care of some of my uh, records, record collection. I had to cut down yeah, on some of that stuff. And tell, and explain to the people. A lot of work, man. Because I was blown away, man. Just, just give people, give an honest number right now. How many records do you think you have? You told me 5,000, but it might be more. What's the oh, no, 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 no. Oh, it's more than that. Come on. Yeah, come on. Well, then give <laughs> put something out there. Paint the uh, picture for how many records. I it's don't know how many, man. It's thousands. I have thousands, bro. I don't <laughs> 10? Ten? What? 10,000? Close, probably. Wow. I mean, you got to realize, dude, I, I, I've i been spinning for a long time. That's crazy, man. That's wild. I know, man. I, I'm, I feel old. <laughs> but How's your wife feel about all those records laying around? She don't like them. She hates them. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I, I do not care. Real quick, man. Hold on. <laughs> man, white bees don't be letting us have nothing, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> my wife now, obviously, but my girlfriend at the time, uh, she let me have my studio. I had a studio just like you, and I was rapping, <clears throat> doing my thing, Corey Mack. And um, man, she got to the point where it, when we left that, the, my last studio, went to our new place. She was like, "Look, I finally need a closet." So you won't have uh, anymore. And I've been without a studio for five years now. And I can tell you, it's rough, man. It's rough. They don't, don't be letting us have dude. nothing, man. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> uh, we got M, uh, uh, AC said M3 needs to DJ that Trump eviction party. We need that. I know. I saw that. <laughs> that <you wonder? laughs> I'll do for free. <laughs> Baby, Mondo can't read this. So comment what you want. I would know. Oh, I would know. I put his glasses on once. Oh man, come on! But it is. But like what it says, you probably like, did. I don't know. The Mexican Benjamin Button man. You look. When okay. So when I first met you at the radio station, we'll just go back. It was our days at Energy. And when I first met you, man, I really thought I was like I thought either like really late thirties, like thirty nine, about to be forty. Come on, man. I like, no. I thought like forty, forty one, and you were like, no, I'm like. 48 or 49 or <laughs> and I'm like oh wow like, I was like oh shit you you took me you, you got me <laughs> I tell you man uh I'm blessed you know to still be around and still be spinning you know uh <laughs> but uh but yeah man I, it is what it is I I don't know yeah I, I don't know what to tell you I feel it um I like what we're talking about how you were spinning for a long time uh, talk to me about <laughs> fucking Fabian. <laughs> Mondo is really poor. <laughs> close, close. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, are, Mondo, Mondo, DJ M3, are you sipping tonight? Thank you. Okay, there we go. There we go. I, wanted I knew to you were gonna ask that. I knew I it. To make sure, okay, because I was like, <laughs> you know, because when we worked the clubs together. You would only want to have one. Maybe I could slip you a second one in a shot that night. Maybe. You know me. Uh, that's I a lot. Started off, <laughs> I always started off at the bottom. They had that $3, you call it, from 10 to 11, that double yep. Jamie. I had to get it winding. I had to get it going. Man, I knew it was the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, man. man. I don't have Jameson. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. <laughs> hey, man. I love that, man. I love that. Hey, but Mondo, uh, you were talking about your early on, uh, how you've been spinning for so long, man. When we used to talk, yeah. uh, you told me just about me. I loved hearing about the evolution of music for you because you've been around for almost every, like, not early on generate, but like almost every generation of like music that you can almost take home. And what I mean by that is vinyl, cassette, CD, yeah. and then MP3. You <clears throat> every single moment of that and so many people even my age um a, maybe a little older than me maybe like ac we didn't live in that era what's it been like being a dj through so many eras of music man holy crap <laughs> you started uh, you started when uh maybe djing in like the 80s 84 dude okay okay 80. 84 is when i really like Actually, before that, I, I kind of got into it because around that time, uh, what really got me was when I heard this song, I was at a school dance. And back then, I was in sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Back then, middle school, uh, it was the 80s. So we had dances at night. We had a DJ, the whole nine, you know what I mean? Uh, and at that time, I was in band, sixth grade. Um, 
uh, and then I remember uh, it's like, oh, let's go to a, a couple of friends. Were like, they're gonna have a, a dance. Let's go to it. So I was like, all right. So uh, it started like at seven o'clock at night and ended around ten, which is you can't do that now. I don't think they do that now. Yeah, yeah. But Hell so we went, <laughs> we went, we went, and uh, we were there, and uh, you know the guy. It was Sound Factory. The, the guy spinning. And they uh, put on this song I'd never heard before. And it had this rhythm and just electronic sound and stabs. And like, I was like, what the fuck is this? Wow. And I'm by the speaker and I'm looking around and like, no one's catching on, but I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, everyone's just like, whatever. Yeah. And I put my head to the speaker. I'm like, and th this beat, and I'm like, holy shit. And then the stab. And I'm like, is this an orchestra that just everyone hit the same note at the same time. Cause I was in band at that time and I was learning. I'm like, what the fuck is this? And it turned out to be planet rock. I went to go ask the DJ. Oh. I'm like, Holy shit. That changed my life right there. That did it. That was around 82 around that time. And then, uh, I think a big thing I, was music, a big thing in your house when you were growing up. My dad, my, well, my mom loved blues and uh, a lot of Mexican music. My dad loved uh, a lot of soul R&B type stuff, Marvin Gaye, uh, and a lot of rock when I was young, Led Zeppelin, you name it, all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, I guess you could say that. Every, music all the time. Uh, so when I heard that song, that kind of like, holy spark, that's when it, it started. And then um, next uh, the year went by, I was in seventh grade and then started buying records around that time. But I really didn't start spinning to around 84. I already kind of knew how to cut around by that time. I didn't know how to blend yet, but I knew how to cut. I taught myself how to cut. Mind you, there was no YouTube or no one teaching no, me how to scratch. You None of that. Either learn by failing or probably be taught by like <laughs> exactly doing it. Right? Exactly. And and bro, when I say practice, I mean the whole 80s. Really? All the 80s was just practice, practice day and night. I uh, up to a point where around, and then that, right around that time, I think around 85, 86, I started spinning at uh, Image. And um, that's where I learned, that's where I learned how to, what now? Is that where the Image reunions comes from? Exactly, exactly. Oh, nice, nice. And right around, right around that time, uh, I learned how to blend. And I could only blend, since I didn't have pitch control turntables at that time that I had, uh, I was just matching records that were kind of close to the BPM range. Mm -hmm. And that's how I learned how to kind of blend. Mm -hmm. But once I got to, ta to 1200s, I mean, being on belt drives, I was so careful when I got on, on uh, 1200s. I mean, you could be rough as much as you could be on it. And it'd be really fine. Rough. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, go, go with it, you know. Hit that pitch control, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so that... But that was that image. So I learned how to use the tables there. Uh, I learned how to program for a crowd, uh, different genres, new wave, hip hop, uh, freestyle, uh, bass. Yeah. Those mainly were, were the, uh, uh, was the genre there. Like, all those songs were popping at that time. Uh, so I did that all through the 80s. Right around 90, by that time, I mean, I was battling. I, I taught myself how to battle, trick mix, the whole nine. Uh, and there was a few of us back then that would, every time there would be a DJ battle, uh, I would see, you know, the typical guys that would be there. Vino, I mean, Vino always battled. Uh, great times, man. I love Vino. Uh, AK, I would see AK every now and then, you oh. know. Uh, but right around that time, um, God, what was this, 90, 91? Uh, the DMC was coming to town. And by that time, dude, I was practicing like a motherfucker, like right. day and night. So I wound up Had that pretty entering the battle. At the time? Huh? Had that pretty much became your life at the time? Oh, dude, practice, practice, practice. What is that? That's six years now? How old yeah, uh, it's probably about 20, 21. Nice. Wow. So I got in, uh, I, uh, I made it to the finals. Well, uh, first I, I won. Made it to the finals here in San Antonio. Took first here in San Antonio for the DMC. Uh, went up to Dallas to battle. Uh, this was the year Baby G won the, the U.S. battle. So I battled him in, in, in Dallas. 
uh, Deshay, which was Vanilla Ice's DJ at the time, uh, was in it. A whole bunch of DJs were in it. And they covered uh, Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, New Mexico, the South area, you know? SA. Uh, so all the DJs that won their cities winded up going to Dallas for this battle. Wow. Uh, I didn't get to go to New York for the final, but I did take third. So you were representing San Antonio? <laughs> San Antonio, it's straight up, yeah. <laughs> come on, man, come but on. You, you know I gotta give it, but it was, it was, come on, man. <laughs> Stop, man. <laughs> but right around that time, I was, I was uh, producing, God, I was producing three albums at that time. Uh, I was doing Warfare's album, Too Art to Hype, which had a good run. Yeah. And uh, Crazy Posse. Uh, that was, and these, song, these albums had like a good 20 tracks in them. You know what I mean? I was always in the studio, practicing studio, practicing studio. Yeah. And um, see what else? Uh, quick, so my time quick, was quick, limited, quick, man. man. Shout out a couple people in the building. Nino in the building. Uh, Pammy. <laughs> what up, what up? And uh, yo, we got Xavier the freaking Reekin in the building. Hold X, on. what up? Oh, <laughs> Hey. Nice. <laughs> I like that he was showing you love this morning too, man. I like that. I told oh you, man! I, even though that they didn't mention who it was, you this morning when we talked, you were like, "How'd you know it was me yesterday?" I was like, "Come on, man, come on!" When, he's <laughs> when you're like, re, when you're repost, you don't repost shit. So I was like, uh, <laughs> "No, man." <laughs> I, I appreciate the love, man. X, you know, got me on there. It was a, uh, it was fun, man. Yeah. Uh, good time. I appreciate it. Hey, um, I know you. I know you're talking about. We were just talking about your competition, man. Um, yeah. I just want to jump in real quick before we get just too far ahead in, in your timeline. Um, just tell the people real quick. What were some early on inspirations in the '80s for you as far as oh. DJ? DJ, okay. Uh, or, or, or I, I know you're too, too. You're too young for this. You're too young for this, but hey, okay, but that's okay. There, there, there was old heads listening, but the youngins want to know as well. Me in particular. Okay. Well, I was really poor. I mean, I grew up in the projects, but um, a friend of mine had cable. <laughs> he had MTV, right? So we would go to his house and we were both in bands. So he was a good friend of mine. Okay. Uh, so I go to his house and we'd be watching MTV and there was Planet Rock that would come on, the song that I was telling you about. Uh, but I already knew the song. But then there was this, this uh, 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 record called Buffalo Gals by Malcolm McLaren. And the video was like a rhyme, kind of like a rhyme, it, it, but it was like a hip hop beat, New, straight up New York style. Okay. And um, there was a video out for it and they were scratching on it. And sure enough, there was 1200s. And I'm like, oh, fuck, you were feeling I want to do this. That's all I want to do is this. So it was that, it was also uh, Grandmaster DST who, who scratched on the Herbie Hancock rocket uh so it was a couple of things that got me going jam master j man big influence yeah I and then there was you've told, uh, you've told me that one you've told me that one before i know that there's oh yeah i know there's another one that's just big in you i know not maybe so much not so much considered a real not so much considered a dj nowadays but i know dr dre was a really big influence oh, in your life. let me tell you though okay, let okay. me tell you i i have I, dr dre records when you know he was wearing all the glitter stuff mm -hmm. but he had he had a couple of uh 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 mega mixes that he would press up that I have in my collection. Hey. And uh, uh, they would sell them at the record stores, Dr. Dre. And right around that time, he had a, a song called Surgery that he was kind of branching out, doing his own thing at that time. Uh, this is way before NWA. Okay, I was gonna you say, know, yeah. it, it was before that time. And uh, he was part of World Class Wrecking Crew. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Uh, So, yeah, so he was doing all that stuff. Uh, and I liked his stuff. His stuff was great. You know, surgery was awesome. Um, God, those days, man, I tell you. Nothing beats the 80s, though. I've seen every decade, man. The 80s kind of morphed everything to where we are now because yeah. electronic music started popping off early on, whether it be new wave, dance, freestyle, hip-hop. Hip-hop music, yeah. the birth of hip-hop, yes, yes. And I was a hip hop head, dude. Like all hip hop. And, and I gotta tell people, man, that's exactly that's immediately what I loved about you. Someone like <laughs> the uh, fly. <laughs> here, uh, what about the fly? Um, that too, man. But <laughs> yeah, X. Like you, him, just some of the San Antonio DJs that were just hip hop heavy, and I just I straight loved up hip hop. I mean, I it. had Schooly D. I had the Bridge, NC Shan. I mean, all this, all this early New York hip hop stuff. Yeah. Uh, 
California wasn't doing a lot of hip hop, hip hop. They were doing more um, Egyptian Lover, you know, the Dr. Dre stuff, the Uptempo stuff. Uh, uh, all the hip, grimy hip hop was coming from New York at that time. Uh, uh, all the bass stuff was coming from Florida. To, to touch on that real quick for like, yeah, like I said, people like me that didn't grow up like in that era, how, how was it you got music from New York? It was- in Well, yeah. Oh, it was here. It, uh, okay. There was a couple, there was a few record stores back then. Um, Sound, Sound Warehouse was a huge uh, uh, company. They had them all over. Okay. But there was one record store called Sound of Music that I would buy all my stuff from. Uh, and I'd be there every day. After school, I wouldn't eat lunch. I'd take that $5 or whatever and go downtown, take the bus downtown and look through a whole crate that just came in. And then I'd have to choose do i get this record or that record which one do i like more and get this one oh, got you, and that's slowly how it started to build you know um and right there i was a hip-hop head when you're building your collection you're pretty much thinking about your set well i'm thinking about what i like first and, and uh uh what will people break to or get off to or dance to okay you know this is before the freestyle really exploded around 85 86 this is before that and um it was all hip hop joints, man, for the most part. Uh, what can I say, man? <laughs> it was good no, stuff. No, man, that's, that's, like I said, I used to sit in your studio. Uh, you know, I used to be holding you up a little bit from working. Uh, sometimes I'd be talking to you for like an hour, <laughs> which I'm sure, I'm sure someone like Pat would be like, yo, what you doing with M3 for an hour, man? You're asking to be. <laughs> <laughs> well, so like, if you're in here, might as well cut the script, right? I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> and I'm just soaking in knowledge, man. I'm soaking in knowledge. I'm learning. Um, but those are the stories, man. Things like this that I love just because, uh, like I said, I'm 32 years old and it was just cool getting to hear everything. Tell them how many copies of each record. Uh, that's a thing, right? Where you've got to get two or three. I always had to get two copies. Okay. Uh, reason being is because I'm telling you, I was already practicing how to, you know, yeah. uh, how to do tricks uh the good thing the good thing about me is i was kind of thin so i was able to do this thing like i was really quick and i could bend my body do you know scratch on my back my you shoe the, you know you were doing the, oh, the, oh, all of that okay. all of that man uh so you needed two copies you needed two copies uh so that's yeah yeah xavier said uh, <laughs> for the q burn yeah oh Shh, it's time <laughs> i gotta tell you though uh, uh one of the first records i bought was uh um alan the fish by hashim okay i uh, love that record you've heard it before it's it, it goes it's time and then it's kind of like an electro kind of track I bet you uh are. just just feel it you know all 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 these little samples that are on this record uh winded up remixing that record in 2000 for the 2000 uh, what was it the 2k remixes of that song cutting records uh was blown away of you know with what i did without the dat and original uh, uh stems from the song the guy that owned the record label uh cutting records reached out to me and he's like you did this how did you do this and i'm like well i i a lot of eq i played every i replayed the drums replayed the bass line keys the whole nine uh and then i also added my own vocoder voice to it and i played the keys with my vocoder voice and then i added hashim's old stuff on top so he was blown away he sent me the original stems of that song and i grabbed what i wanted and then sent it back and they released it they pressed it and released the uh, that song oh, yeah man. hold on that's a <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. I love to. Was this your first time getting something of yours pressed? Oh, hell no. <laughs> no, man. Uh, I, I've been having records pressed since the Two Art Hype days, uh, 91. Okay. Probably my first record that I produced that's been pressed. Then after that, uh, you know, I, I did a compilation when I was about 24 uh, on my own. I mean, I produced everything, got a couple of artists on, on, the, on this song. On, on this uh, compilation album. And then, um, yeah, what, what was on? Oh, I had a song on there called Arroz con Pollo. It was a house record. This was like in 94, 95. 
And I, I, um, I, it's so weird, man. Somebody from Mexico reached out to me from Mercury Records and was like, this is you. And we started talking. I'm like, yeah, that's my song. And he's like, we want to release it international wise and, uh, you know, give you a contract, pay you for it. I remember. You and it, it all came, it all came from that one record that I spent so much time producing. Yeah. Uh, and then once I did that, uh, the guys, Charles Chavez at, uh, at KTFM, uh, saw, heard the stuff that I was doing. And right around that time, Steve Chavez, his brother was coming in cause he was leaving. And, uh, he told Steve to hire me because of the mixing. He, he knew I had been spinning for so long already and also producing. So that's how I kind of got my foot in the door there. And man, I just been remixing and producing. I, and then after that came stigma albums after that. Uh, a lot of 12 inches and a lot of remixes around throughout this whole time. And I think Stigma was the one, and, and shout out Steve Chavez. Y'all introduced me to him, great guy. Um, <laughs> Cha-cha. Really, really dope dude, and man, he brought some cool ass talent around the station that I had to- I love Steve, man, he's my boy. Hey, yo, real quick, real quick, Mona, we gotta say what's up to everybody. I, I Xavier, man, I forgot okay. So, uh, Jay Parado is in here. Uh, I think we had some other people. We see Melba's in the building, hey! Melba. <laughs> uh, Mel uh, Lowry. Uh, who else we got? Oh, Melody. Melody. Mel oh, Mel what up, Mel? Um, DJ Jacob. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out to everyone in the building. Catch it up with Mac. Episode 12. The one and only legendary DJ M3 in the motherfucking building, baby. Come on. Y'all know the vibes tonight. Embarrassing me, man. <laughs> like always, every episode is fueled by Jameson. Uh, I need y'all to send me that sponsorship, if, even at three seventy five. And something, I'll something, because I don't think Lori's gonna let me go to Total Wines tomorrow and buy another bottle. So I, <laughs> fund me. I need to set up. I need to set up a cap. cap. Something. My damn Jameson, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's all good. Worked with a lot a of uh, DJs here in the city. Um, are there some DJs, and I don't want you to feel like you're stepping on anyone else's toes, but are there some DJs you really hold in high regards here in San Antonio? That I hold? Yeah, that you, oh. that, that someone oh, dude. look up to, or you really watch their career. Um, I'm sure it's someone probably like Xavier. Um, oh, yeah, X. Yeah, uh, um, I mean, I've seen, I gotta say, man, I love all the guys doing their thing. There we uh, go. From clubs, from Duano to Swiss to X being on oh, air for so oh, long oh, now. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, my you know, Renee, Renee, uh, Renee C, you know, all these DJs, uh, uh, DC, uh, so many to name, but I love that they're just, they just keep grinding and doing, DC doing it because guys. it's, it's, they love to do it and it's a passion. You can't force anyone to do this stuff. Uh, no one forced me. Yeah. My wife hated going record shopping with me, man. I'd be there for hours and hours. She hated it, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no nah, man definitely so, my, props to everyone though props to everyone uh i, I love seeing them grow you know what i mean yeah i mean you know i had dj cobweb on the show um you know uh, <laughs> i love that boy um dj cobweb man uh dj eddie uh you know from eddie and yes brass monkey man that's that's my guy too man um i i, I like with eddie Go like ahead. with Eddie, uh, I met Eddie, we were at Joe's Volcano, I believe. Hey! Uh, what was this? Joe's Volcano! Yeah, Joe's I was doing Saturdays. <laughs> oh, man, come on! I was doing Saturdays, and this was after the whole KTFM and even the 1067 Jams, which was a dance station, is that a, a dance station that I was at at that time. This was after that. Uh, I was at Joe's Volcano on Saturdays, and Eddie was new, uh, he, you know, I would spend the night, he'd be there with me and we'd hang out all night. Uh, he kind of learned, you know, and I, at that time there, there was no Serato. Yeah. It was still vinyl. Yeah. Uh, some CDs, but what really broke my heart is when uh, I had to convert everything from vinyl to CDs or from that point after CDs, I went to uh, a hard drive for Serato at that point. But before that, like Ed, me and Eddie would just have ideas, well, you know, I'd be spinning. Walking in with the what? Crate, as they say. Man, I got a hernia carrying those crates too, man. <laughs> Back in the KTFM days, you know, I, I'd have the whole promo crew carrying all my shit. I just have to walk in. I couldn't carry anything, so. 
<laughs> I always wanted, hey, whenever, hey, I remember my days in promo, man. Like I said, I already knew how much of a legend you were. I'm from San Antonio and I already knew your name. And when I got to meet you, man, I was excited. When I got to work with you, when I started off on the promo team, I was like, can I help you? Uh, I'll walk out with you all, you know? And then I remember as I yeah. was hosting and becoming a talent, I, me and you would walk out together, like end the night together. I, let me tell you, Mondo, man, I may, let me personally tell you, um, this Friday night feels to me like an old industry night with us uh, or Paradox. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, Paradox. <laughs> man, dude, I, I used to have such a great time with you, man. The vibes, um, just ever, man, just, just your whole, the whole, just your whole aura. It was just always good, oh. it always felt good. I knew I was in good hands. Um, we worked- Thanks, man, I appreciate that. You knew when I wanted to talk. You knew when I didn't. <laughs> I mean, you knew when I didn't talk. I'm going to go straight in. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good, man. Oh, bro, I am not Tony. I can't go every time. <laughs> you got to give me talk. time. Can we do every four songs or three songs or something like that? <laughs> A little bit. Maybe two, but goddamn, come on. <laughs> hey, uh, I remember that, dude. Hey, uh, Fabian said, fun fact, uh, Hot Henarita was Mondo's first crush and inspiration behind uh, Plenty of Jams. Is that, uh, is Rose in the background? I don't know if this is a topic. <laughs> that should be. I love Henry, man. She's crazy. <laughs> I think She's I, crazy, I, man. I, meet her I don't think you've met her. Have you met her? I met her at Paradox. I think she was, I swear she was hosting uh, one of the nights. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not off air. I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. But, um. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, Henry, I met Henry when I got hired at KTFM in 95, 96. The original powerhouse, hands down, yeah. KTFM. Uh, Henry that was there, uh, she was already there. And Joey D was doing nights. Drex was in the morning. Henry that was doing afternoons. No, middays. Uh, man, what a crew. That was massive. Yeah. Uh, but... I learned a lot there, you know, as time goes on. Uh, and, you know, uh, music always recycles. There's always ups and downs, you know. Sometimes hip hop's reign supreme. And then, you know, it's dance. And then it's, you know, it's just, it's been like that as long as I've been spinning, you know. Uh, I love it. I, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. I was just recently talking about that, that 2019 was like the bummer. You know, 2018 was so mega with music, with artists like Post Malone dropping beer bongs and Bentleys, uh, Drake with Scorpion, Travis Scott with yep. Astro World. It was just like 2018 was wild. And then I thought 2019 was going to carry on like that. It was such a bummer. <laughs> um, but man, can I tell you something? 2020 has really been something special with music. And I wore my XO shirt tonight because I don't know if you're <laughs> Calvin Harris track, but it's a, <laughs> yeah. it's a, Fuck, man. Um, Hell yeah. I'm, I'm loving <laughs> Drake is coming with certified lover boy. Me and the wifey about to fall in love all over again. <laughs> like, Baby? <laughs> no, Baby? <laughs> so I got a couple goals. I don't know. I don't know. Things to accomplish. People have asked us before. It will be coming. I promise y'all. But we're, we're taking our time. We're taking our time. It'll happen. It'll happen, you know, whenever. It'll happen someday. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hey, um, yo, man, you, you've been doing this for a long time. You were already talking about DJing since 84. Um, it's 2020. Um, Fuck. That's a long time, man. What, what has kept you motivated for so long? What, what drives you at this point? And I just want to drop this phrase real quick. Uh, because no one. That's a good question. It. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got to drop this phrase real quick. Sorry to cut you off. Because everyone, you know, what, what's your drive? Where's the passion? Because everyone wants to know, M Mondo, how do you do it? <laughs> I knew you could say that. How, the how do you do it? How do you do it, Corey? Do it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I just picked it up. Maybe it was Fabian. I don't know. I don't know where I got it from, but I just kept saying it. And what's weird is, like, <laughs> I say it jokingly, you know, just to be fun, you know, you know and w what makes me laugh sometimes is, some of the guys that are around me, you know, they know the joke, like, ah, how do you do it? You know, but like when there's someone new and I go, Hey, how do you do it? And then they start breaking it down, how they do it. I'm like, no, no, I'm just messing with you. 
I don't know. I, I just like saying that. It's, it's, you know, and Fabian comes up with so much stuff. Uh, Fabian's the one that came out with uh, Feel Good Friday. Okay. Never okay. got recognized for that. Day and, and he also he, Feel Good Fridays. And he also came up with uh, 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 Saturday Night Takeover. Oh, I like that name. I like and, and he never got credit for it, so I'm, I'm giving, telling, you yep. know, telling you guys now. I'm telling y'all right now, man. Give flowers when flowers are due, man. Shout out, baby. <laughs> because I was Feel Good Fridays at Industry. I was hosting Saturday Night Takeover with you on Energy from 7 to 10. Me and you do our <laughs> We're getting our vibe, baby. Um, Hell yeah. That's dope, man. But, but, but tell me, what has driven you for so long? You're, you know, and I'm not being, I'm not talking down on your age, but you are, you're, you're in your fifties now, man. What is still driving you to, but, but what's still driving you to work at a club Friday night, Saturday night, love the music so much. You, you, um, passion by me, brother. I, this is called a, uh, a DJ high, I guess. When you don't even have to drink or, or do anything. I'm just spinning the, uh, I can't explain it, but the rush you get when the crowd is just yelling and you have them in your hand and you can take them through journeys and the crowd trusts you yep. and you just go and make sure they have a great time. And by the time the night's over with, you know, it's over and I'm just friggin' flying high, you know what I mean? And I feel great. Yeah. Nothing beats that. Maybe that's it. I don't know, but I still love music. I still love spinning. I still love producing, remixing, so I, I don't know. I can't tell you, no, man, but that's I, it. Look, man, I see it. Uh, Nick Trey in the building. Shout out, Nick Trey. Nick. Through, <laughs> hey, shout out my mom coming through, man. I know I, you've met my mom what a before, mom. man. Yeah, <laughs> you know, little Patty Mac, Corey Mac. Come on, man. Tim <laughs> Bob's is tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that you said that, Mondo, because – uh, there's been so many times I've been in a club or, you know, at a lounge where a DJ is spinning a bar, man. And you can tell that the DJ, let me put it like this. And I don't want to say any names, but if you're listening and, and you feel like this might be you, it's probably you. Okay. But, um, where they're just there to pick up a check. They don't really give ah. a fuck how the crowd's feeling. I'm here to play my solid, uh, uh, A's all night, all hits. Hey mom. They're my mom, hey, Mondo, what's going on? <laughs> um, but they, they don't care, man. And like you just said, it's a job I, I know. every night, bro. I, I, I got to tell you, the money's good, you know, for the most part. But, like, um, you know, and I got to tell you, there's some times where I'm, like, after working all day and then you have to go do the club, you're like, oh, man. You know, after taking a shower, getting ready to roll out, you get tired, man, you know, and – it's it's one of those things where you just once you get there you wake up yeah. and you're good to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah, I, I feel you. Your your schedule used to be crazy, man. I used to tell Lori. I mean, not only were you working Monday through Friday about eight to five thirty, maybe even a little six, um, but then you'd be at fucking industry with me, or then Brass Monkey after that, and then Paradox. Yeah. Uh, Ten to twelve, you would maybe get home. One one o'clock, maybe twelve forty-five, maybe fall asleep by two. Saturday, you're up. Family stuff. Bonham, got to get there at nine thirty. Ten to two, get home maybe yep. two forty-five. Sleep by four. Sunday, sleep all day, man. Your your schedule was crazy, bro. Sundays it was horrible because I didn't sleep. Uh, getting up early all week and then going to bed at four and then waking up at eight, like ah. Uh. Yeah. Throwaway day. Couldn't do anything. No, nah, man, but <laughs> I love it. I, I can tell you right now, I think that's why a lot of people hold you in high regards. I think that that's why so many people love coming to see you spin. When they would see you doing the image reunion nights, they knew what the fucking vibes were that night. When you were doing the old school and, and 10 nights with me or the 80s nights with me at, at Paradox or at Industry, man, they knew what the vibes were. They knew what they were yeah. doing. And, um, <laughs> Like I said, that, that's the reputation that you hold, man, that, that it's not a paycheck for you. It's like, this is life for you. you th yeah. This is everything, you know? I remember how stressed out you'd be at the club, man. We'd be at the Bonham. And everyone, that, anyone that's been to the Bonham or anyone on here, Fabian and them, that have hosted for the Bonham, uh, for KTFM, y'all know 10 to 11, it's weird. 
It's a weird vibe. Like I said. Work it. Work it. Kind of. I would start my night off with a double Jamie on the <laughs> uh, Fernanda downstairs. She knew right away what I needed because hold on. This <laughs> yep. is Bob, let me get a little something going. Um, but, bro, you'd be so stressed out. And I could tell that you were so – it was so important to you that people felt what you were playing – and that gets lost with, with this new generation, I think, of DJs, man. Well, it, it, and also, uh, to, like, early on, that first hour is kind of always a throwaway hour. Uh, you, I was pretty much just playing hits that the radio station, uh, the programming hits for the station. I'd kind of get that out of the way early on. And then as the night started to build, I can go wherever I want it, you know, and still play all the hits as well on yeah. top of that. But um, – there's nothing like getting that crowd going, man. You know, once it's going, it's going. And as far as new music, um, I tell you, I'm like, I'm going to hit this. It's the right time. It has to be the oh. right time. Oh, I mean, <laughs> new ones were coming. When you were bringing, so, uh, when it wasn't so poppy, because you know me, I'm a hip hop dude. Now, oh, I know, I know. Now, if I got to be on a top 40 station, let's go. I mean, I'm here to do the job. Let's do it. <laughs> hip hop comes on. That's me in my bag right there, man. You knew. I hear you, man. I hear you, dude. So that was always cool playing something new. You know what I mean? Something that I just got that afternoon, mm -hmm. you know, and it works like a, like a charm. Like it just like butter. You know what I mean? Uh, that's great. And when the crowd's just yelling for a song, I know they don't know, but they're just going nuts. Like, yeah, uh, you can't beat that, man. That's real, man. I, like I said, after so many years and I don't make that bad way, man, but just like, after so many years, it seems like you're still in it, how you described how you were excited watching the 1200 spun by, I think, Planet Rock or whoever on TV, man. Yeah. Um, All right, AC. Mondo, you're a legend. It was great, man. And that's, man, that's one of my favorite bosses, him, Pat. Um, yeah. <laughs> my boss at uh, Gold's Gym, man. Those are like my top three bosses of all time, man. I got to say, man. Mac, you're a talent. Got nothing but absolute. Yo, man, I, you know, brother. Hey, if you need somebody, <laughs> let me know because the move's probably gonna be New England in the spring. So if you need someone, <laughs> let me know now because. Wait a minute, Tom's not there. Austin. Tom's not there. Huh? Tom's not there. Oh no! Come on, bro. Don't even get me started. <laughs> come on. What are you doing? If y'all need to know what I'm, this is this is Boston right here in case. <laughs> And that's where I'm ending up, and it's pass all day, every day. Tom can go do whatever he wants. He wants to sweat in the swamp. Dude, if you want to live a swamp life, go for it, man. Are you kidding me? Boston to Tampa Bay, man, that's – yo, man, that's almost like going to Dallas. Come on. I don't know, dude. He can do whatever he wants. <laughs> Dallas, come on. What the hell? That was low. <laughs> hey, Mondo, so I told you before, man, um, we're going to cut off at, in seven minutes. So I think real quick, man, uh, right. I've got maybe about like three, four more questions for you. And then I told you I want to get right. this little trivia real quick. You don't know what it is for everyone that's in. Right I don't. Now, and I got this little trivia for Mondo and here's how it's going to work. He's got to list everything in the correct order. Okay. And if he doesn't get it, if he doesn't list it right, he's got a drink for each one he gets wrong. For everyone he gets right, I'm a sip. Y'all know what we sipping on? Jameson. Okay. Jameson all night. My brother Mondo sipping on some crown tonight. I love it. Show the bottle. Show the placement. Okay. Hey. <laughs> I've had this bottle for a long time. <laughs> Man, because I'm telling you, I used to try to get you. I'd be like, you want another drink? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, um, it's all good. But for everyone watching real quick, DJ MQ just jumped in the building, man. Um, Yo, Q, what up, man? I haven't talked to that guy in a while. Hey, what up, Q? Brown, man, we're going to just jump off real quick, Mondo. I'm going to go to the restroom real quick. Refresh your drink. I'm going to jump okay. right back on like three minutes. And, yo, let's finish up this conversation, man. It's a, it's a great time so far, man. I love it. All right. You got it. Hey, man, you, you know I got to hit you real quick, man. You know we got to get the vibes going just to, you know, just to end it out, man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You know we got to do something, man. Once again, catch it up with Matt. Episode 12. <laughs> DJ M3 in the Pilton tonight, man. I think, you know what? 
I think you need an intro, bro. I do, and we're going to work on that. I'm already going to talk to you about that. We're working on that. All right, all right. Come on. I'm going to send you some vocals. We're working on that. It's 2020. I need an intro, man. <laughs> everybody that's watching, we're jumping right back in. I got the legendary DJ M3 coming right back on with me. Catch on back. Episode 12, M3. Let's get right back to it in a second, brother. All right. Ain't nothing fancy. I'm still broke. Cross town like Yancey. I grew up though.